Hello guys, it's Jason from Skinny Research and Development, and today we're going to do something a little different. I know usually I do electronics demonstrations, different things, uh, but on Thursday night I got the opportunity to go to uh, St. Petersburg to see Destin from Smarter Every Day do a demo at a glass gallery. It's a Duncan McClellan glass. It's one of those galleries where they take you know, glass hot out of the fire, they blow the glass and form the glass. There are three ladies there who did a demo where they uh, made a fish. Um, out of molten glass, which is pretty cool to watch. And then for Destin's part, he did a demonstration of the Prince Rupert's Drop experiment uh, that he did on his channel that I'll link right here. So what I'm going to show you now are clips from that night and just kind of all the fun that we had. And then um, as the clips go through, I'm going to stop at different places and we're going to discuss some things that I learned uh, that I didn't learn from the initial video. So I hope you enjoy these clips. <music> Because if it's right. interesting to me, then it, it meets the criteria to be a video, right? People think I make videos to like try to get popular on YouTube, but I don't. I make videos because I'm trying to learn something, and it's stuff I was going to do anyway. I just turn a camera on when I do it. What is that called? <laughs> I'm gonna call it the Megator. <laughs> um, I want to go to space. I want to be an astronaut. I'm not joking about it. I'm serious about it. And I'm. I don't care if people laugh at me. Like, you just outsmart every day. No, it's really easy to do. No, I just It's really easy to do. So we have to put them in these big ovens that we call annealers. Those run about like 900 degrees and over the next 24 hours or so it will slowly bring them down to room temperature so there's not distress on the glass and leaving it out. So everything that we make, we don't get to see for like another day and a half. So, and it's frustrating because you think it's so huge, we call it the shrinker too. And then when you go in and it's like, oh, it's actually only this big. It's a lot bigger when it was on this that pipe. So on the video, every time we made a Prince Rupert drop at work, right? Yeah. Every single time, right? You think that's going to happen tonight? No. no. Probably not. So here, this is why. It's going to drip it in here slowly in a couple... Did you hear that just then? Did everybody hear that ping? No. What was that? It was glass breaking off the pipe because the glass is cooling while the metal is cooling. Because the, the metal is, is cooling at a different rate than the glass, and because of their expansion coefficients being different, you got to break. So what we're going to do now is she's going to bring that over here, drop it in here, and you're going to have big glass at the bulb, and you're going to have little glass at the tail. Well, that big glass is going to stay hot. The tail is going to is going to cool off quicker, right? And as it cools down, we might get that same thing that just happened with that pipe, and it might shatter. Sometimes it takes a couple of times to get it right. When it happens, I'll know and we'll, and we'll go for it.
looked at it and said there's a bubble on the inside. And that happens on every single one. So what happens is when, when the drop goes in, do you remember from the video? What happens to the outside? Hardens. It's really hard really fast, right? And so it locks in the shape. And so the inside is hot. So what happens to the inside after the outside's locked in? What does the inside do? Remember the little distance in the video? What do they do? <laughs> they do what? It's contracting, it's pulling in. So if, if she was right there and I was right here, we're all pulling in. Go ahead and just humor me for a second. If we're pulling in right here, right here, a bubble will form. It happens very, very often. So we've got a bubble. And almost every prayer trooper drop I've ever seen has a bubble in it. So do you understand what he was talking about there? That's the first thing that I learned, that there is a bubble in the middle of the Prince Rupert's drop. And it happens almost every time. So I've got my bag ready here, so uh, let's take a look at that. And it's at this point that I realize that Prince Rupert's drop is a rather unfortunate thing to have to try to draw. So pretty much instantly this hard outer shell forms due to coming in contact with the cold water. And in the interior what we have is pretty much molten glass. But as it begins to cool, this material is going to shrink. And as it shrinks, it's going to be pulling this hardened wall in. Because everything's trying to, to shrink in together. However, here's the part where the bubble is made. As this begins to cool, it adheres to this outside wall. And it does start to pull, but it's also pulling up everything next to it. So everything's kind of pulling against this wall, but it also has to shrink into a lesser volume. So it pulls away from the middle and leaves this uh, bubble in the center. So even though there's a lot of force and pressure pulling this wall inward, the motion of all the material is pulling itself towards the outside wall. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it out. It should be cool now. I'm gonna peck on it with a hammer. It might break, it might not, I don't know. Sometimes they don't break, like even when you hit it really hard. You saw in the video what happened. I challenged him, he hit as hard as he could, and he thought he broke it, but did he break it? No, the tail broke it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out. We're gonna stand over there on that wood, and I'm just gonna peck on it with a hammer. I'm not going to go crazy because I'm, I don't want to. <laughs> That's why. Oh, wow. wow. All right. Is it? Wow. It's pretty big. All right, so I'm going to peck on it a little bit. Everybody see it? Yeah. I'm just going to tap it. I don't want it to break. It does have to make it open, really. Pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break the tail. It should blow up. I'm not gonna promise, but let's see. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. saying it is sand, but it certainly feels like it. Here's an interesting question. Why did my hand, why is my hand not bleeding? So, so what happens is, there's this guy back in the 1600s, his name was Robert Hooke. Has anybody ever heard of Robert Hooke? So Robert Hooke was this British guy who's really big into physics. He uh, he started studying Prince Rupert's shops and he figured out that they, they blow out the same amount they blow in. So it, it kind of neutralizes itself. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna do it one more time. I'm going to break it in my hand with my hand closed to show you that the force doesn't blow out. Even though that's faster than the speed of sound, it doesn't blow out. It's, really, yeah. it's still warm. I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm going to go it off in a second. Take it back out. A little warm. Okay, I think we'll do it. One thing I, I've learned that you got to shut your mouth when you do this because you'll get sand in your mouth. <laughs> right? Three, two, y'all count down. That'd be more fun. Five, four, three, two, one. I don't think I'm bleeding. I haven't looked yet. Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's look. That's pretty much it. 
So the last thing I learned is when the Prince Rupert's drop explodes, it doesn't explode with as much force as I thought. Like he said, the internal pressure of it imploding and the external pressure of it exploding is equal, so it's not that outrageous of an explosion. However, the question I still have is why doesn't it turn into shards of glass that cut you? I mean, if I punch through a window, it, it creates really sharp edges that can cut me. But in this case, it almost turns into a powder, a, a sand-like substance. And when you rub your hand and your finger through it, you don't end up with cuts. It just kind of blows away. So I do still have that lingering question. So maybe one of you guys can explain it. If you can, leave a comment down below. Uh, once again, thanks for watching this video. Uh, I'll see you next time.